Hey, what's up guys? This is Christian. I'm here with my good friend Satchua, uh, owner of Ninja Sushi Food Truck. Right. Uh, he's out here in St. Paul's, Minneapolis too, or just St. Paul? Uh, just St. Paul for now. Just St. Paul. Yeah, yeah been, about, been in it for about a year and a couple months now. Started in March 2017. Um, and I'm just really excited to have him here and have him on the show. Yeah, pleasure is all mine. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with like how you got into the business and the uh, industry. Um, well, actually, let's start with this. Let's start with like your origin story. So, like, how did you, like, from like a kid, and then how did you like get into entrepreneurship? Right. right. The food so, industry? I think what ultimately shaped my foundation uh, of wanted to become a business owner was uh, back back in elementary. I had this reading buddy that every Tuesday they would come and um, uh, this was back in second second grade. Every Tuesday they would come for lunch and they would read a book with us mm -hmm. and whatnot. So. Uh, at the end of my sixth grade year for elementary, he, he actually invited me out to a um, a war ceremony that um, that Kiri Levin did. So the award was for someone who impacted the community, mm -hmm. and he received that award uh, of that year, wow. and he invited me to it. So as a, as a young kid, as a as a preteen, you mm -hmm. know, that that ultimately shaped my foundation of who I wanted to be today because. Uh, you know, it, it was amazing. Being there was just amazing. It was like lights, camera, action. It was it was all that good stuff. So, yep. uh, you know, I, I at, at that time I had made a promise for myself that, you know, one day I had something similar for myself, mm. or I, I would be receiving my own uh, awards and whatnot. So that yeah. shaped my whole my whole foundation of being an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, being what at that time I would have been maybe twelve. Yep. And. Uh, so just through, throughout middle school, throughout high school, I always have a big interest in, in business. Yep. I, even uh, in my advisory classes uh, back in high school, I, you know, I studied business a little, mm, okay. uh, took you know, small business classes in high school. Uh, and right out of high school, I actually went and um, got my degree for auto mechanics. Yep. And then I studied health and fitness for a while. Yep. And I tried, I tried to do something for that with, with those two, uh, with the knowledge I have, but the ball just wasn't rolling, the momentum wasn't going, and then uh, just the winter of 2015, I actually took uh, some business classes over at a nonprofit called Neighborhood Development Center, or okay. NDC. Yep. And that, and at the same time, I was actually uh, interning at a restaurant, uh, at a sushi restaurant, uh, to, to handle some of the operations mm -hmm. and... Uh, just to ultimately learn the uh, the background of running a restaurant, yep. and I just you know with sushi, I just fell in love the whole culture of it. Yep. Fell in, you know the food is great, but it was more of the culture that uh, you know getting to uh, connect with your customers on an intimate level, mm -hmm. being in front of them and serving them directly, having conversations with them. So I, love, I fell in love with the whole culture. Yep. And so when I finished um, the classes at NDC. You know, I already had the background of sushi under my belt as well, so sure. that's that's ultimately where, how and where I got to where I'm at today. How it just kind of combined. Right? Yeah, yeah, just kind of combined. And yep. ultimately, I wanted a restaurant, but yeah. obviously, the overhead is huge, man. Sure. It's it's, sure. it's huge. It's half a million dollar project, and For that's sure. something that you know, as as a young guy and as a young entrepreneur, no one has that type of capital. Yeah. So. I had to just kind of uh, downsize the plan a little bit and you know, start, start building. Yeah, start building from uh, phase one. Yep. You're right. Cool. Um, so you started taking classes in business. Business was always something that you wanted to pursue. Right. And then you did a little bit of food uh, at your internship. Exactly. How did you come up with like the concept of Ninja Sushi? Um, how did that all come? So, so the story with Ninja, right? Yeah. <laughs> the story with Ninja is that, you know. I've always loved ninjas. I always loved sure. uh, swords, and you know, yep. you know, you take those uh, long paper, the, like the toilet tubes. You know what yeah, I mean? And yeah, me, and my yeah. brother, always played with it as yeah. swords and being ninjas. And yep. when I when I first uh, experienced sushi or seen how sushi is made, mm -hmm. they used a janagi knife, which is the longer knife that yep. they use. And I like right away as you know, as a teenager, so I like. Yo, that's a katana. Yo, that's, that's a sword. <laughs> yeah. That's not a sushi knife. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that the whole concept of, the, of ninja and ninja and sushi, that's how it came to play, mm. right? Okay. Right. Cool. What about like um, your type of sushi? Because your sushi, I think, is very different than like yeah. any other sushi. So you can't get your type of sushi anywhere else. Right. So su the what, what I have is uh, both a, a combination of it's a fusion of poke. Mm -hmm. So we do poke. And we do sushi burritos, mm -hmm. and we do do uh, some sushi rolls, yep. like the hot the, the hot cheeto roll and the hot cheeto rito is very popular. Yeah. 
as a top seller over at Ninja Sushi. Mm -hmm. So um, how did you come up with that? So it, it was inspired from so from the poke and from uh, everything that it's on my menu is it, Facebook had a big influence on it. For sure. For sure. And out here in the Midwest is a uncharted territory yeah. I like to call it because yep. uh, sushi is common. Everybody knows what sushi is. Everybody's familiar with sushi, but poke on the other hand. There's not a lot of poke restaurants, mm -hmm. or there's rest sushi restaurants that does poke. Mm -hmm. However, there's not a um, now there's one or two out there. But when when I was first um, coming up with the ideas, there wasn't any poke at all, gotcha. or any restaurant that was dedicated to poke. Mm -hmm. So that's when um, I came with the idea that you know I I'm a make the concept with the menu towards poke mm -hmm. and towards a, like a modern. Uh, fusion of sushi as well for sure right awesome man yeah um, so obviously you started with sushi and right. then you went into you want to create your own restaurant in the future what allowed you to think about like food truck um, as a venture that you wanted to pursue or something that like came across your mind as far as like something you wanted to pursue yeah so with the food truck um, a lot of restaurants are actually converting to food trucks mm -hmm. in fact uh, one of my mentors, you know, had a study, read a study where in 2018, the food trucks industry is actually the number one booming industry here in America for right sure, now. For sure. And I totally, I totally understand and see why. Um, it's a changing generation, mm -hmm. not, not in terms of just uh, the, the food industry, generally speaking, uh, but in terms of politics, in terms of how people shop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, a change, it's a changing generation is how I like to see it. And yeah. Um, you know, with with the food truck idea, like I, said, I, I, I didn't even want to. It, it never crossed my mind until I had to go back to a drawing board and calculate my overhead or what I with the amount the amount of money I needed to uh, build a restaurant or even run the business. Yeah. So, and uh, you know, so I just started going back to the drawing board, looking at what my options are in terms of. Uh, you know, step one was mm -hmm. building the foundation and putting the integrity in my in my menu, the integrity in my food, yep. and then building uh, to a restaurant and to a bar, and mm -hmm. then building uh, the atmosphere of my restaurant to suit the lifestyle that I want. So, mm -hmm. um, number one, it, it it did have to do with the capital, and just looking at my options and what's more realistic than what my immediate gratification one. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, for sure. Right. Cool. I think that's right, man. Yeah. Um, and we see a lot of food truck, trucks popping up each and every right. day. Um, so, what is the difference between that you've seen um, that lets a food truck kind of like stand out between like a restaurant and a food truck? You uh, you get to move around. You get to move around. You, you get to test different atmosphere. Get to test different markets. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's flexible. Yeah. It's flexible. Uh, in terms of uh, changing your menu, and and you don't want to do it too much, of course. Mm -hmm. You want you want to have a consistent uh, menu or a consistent concept, but at the same time, you get to uh, you have more flexibility with it. Trying new things, yeah. Yep. So trying new things, trying new menus. Uh, a lot of restaurants they they use their food truck to trial their their new items, their mm -hmm. new entrees. Yep. So yeah, uh, that's how I like to see it. But ultimately, I just like. Being able to move around to different festivals, to uh, different parts of the neighborhood, so. Gotcha. Right. What about like, um, obviously there's a lot of food trucks out there, mm -hmm. um, and you just said that like food trucks are like the number one booming businesses right. out there, one of them at least. Right. How do you like separate yourself when like there's like a bunch of food trucks lined uh -huh. up, you know? How do you like stand out? Well, it's, it's definitely your menu, the is ingredients it? you have, yeah. and the, the food integrity. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's made the same always the same mm -hmm. um, in terms of your main menu like my signature menu is always the same yep. um, it's consistent yep. uh, building that customer loyalty mm -hmm. um, and being visible yep. is, is how you set your, uh, yourself apart from these other food trucks yeah and even though you know it's, it's hard just generally speaking when when I say that the food truck industry is the number one booming industry in America, which is which is a fact. However, in Minnesota, it's kind of a different story. Yeah. And I say that because we we don't have summer year round. Yeah. Like California or out in the down south, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what makes it tough for us mm -hmm. here in Minnesota. For sure. Yeah. So, and, and to say that it's it's the number one booming industry, 
it's very true because there's a lot of food trucks out there yeah uh, right now a lot of new food trucks me being one of them yeah yeah however because this is because it's booming and because we, we only had six months of good weather in minnesota yeah it's also very saturated yeah so that's what makes it that's my number one struggle with uh with the food truck industry right now because in minnesota we don't have warm with 60 degree and over weather mm -hmm. for 12 months out of the year yeah. unlike you know california for yeah. say we only have six months so yeah. it's, it's a good industry it's the, it's the number one booming industry but it's very saturated in minnesota because of the weather so what did you do this past winter to i i did it i, did I ran through the winter and man it was torture <laughs> it was torture i had a torpedo heater in uh in my trailer yeah running uh just just to keep my toes from from freezing wow. so it's that's this uh, this winter, I'm debating really hard if I want to do it again because yeah. last last winter was it was tough. Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm. Cool. Um. So that was one of my questions that I had was like one of the struggles you went through. So let's move on to the next ones. Um. What are some things that allowed you? You think that were like the key factors for you to be able to be successful? Because it's like. Uh, was it some marketing campaign you did, or was it more like just your product was just so good that you just can't come back and they, it's word of mouth? Right. Right. You know, right. What, are the, what are some key factors? The key factor, I think, the number one most important thing in business, hands down, is marketing. Yeah. Uh, social media marketing, for to be very specific, mm -hmm. utilize your Facebook. Mm -hmm. In my experience, I, I don't know about other what other food trucks or generally speaking, what other businesses are are using in terms of uh, social media yeah. but my number one platforms right now is uh facebook yeah because uh of the review system the rating yep. system that's sure. very important for sure and number two is my instagram yeah because uh in instagram it's like you're you're showcasing your your trophies you're showcasing your your menus mm -hmm. what you have what you have out there and um uh, get to be able to uh also market it in a way where your customers are posting up your your pictures and telling them where they got it from yeah that's also so customer marketing and customer engagement is, yep. is a two most important things for for any it should be for any business for yeah. that matter yeah right yep. for sure what are give, give us like so this is a business and marketing so right so like give right. us like a technical tip that like you did to that or like you've done that you think has worked well for you marketing well wise. specifically in the in the food truck industry you have to post every day yep you have to post every day uh and you know in other businesses it, it might it might not apply but yep. it's because people need to know where i'm at yeah and people need to know what's popular and, and what people are eating what they're buying mm -hmm. so you you have to post every day um for, for myself this is what works for me post every day of your your top sellers which is my hot cheeto rito my hot cheeto roll uh my and my ninja my super secret ninja ball i call it so mm -hmm. those are my top sellers so i market that more than the other uh, the, the other ones yeah. because it's, it's what sells and cosmetically yeah. it's what looks better yeah yeah and people sure. eat with their eyes all the yeah. time especially so, on social media exactly yeah exactly so uh in short um post your location post your your product yeah in terms it is my food your, mm -hmm. your top sellers uh and in terms of customer engagement this is what i do and, th and just in case you guys don't know if you buy uh a product from ninja sushi you post it on facebook mm -hmm. or instagram and you hashtag ninja sushi mn as in ninja sushi minnesota and if your fi if your picture gets featured on our Facebook, you win a free bowl. Wow, so that's okay. that's the incentive. There you so, go. Yep. Go and uh, go take them up and get. Yeah, some sushi. <laughs> that's right. And do it because I, I need uh, I need to update my uh, my lookbook too. So yeah, sure. start tagging me. Start hashtagging uh, Ninja Sushi MN. Okay. For sure. So so it, it creates you know uh, good marketing. Yep. And it creates uh, customer engagement. Mm -hmm. Right. For sure. What about um, promotional posts? Like do you use Facebook ads? Do you the work of influencers and foodies and stuff like that right what, so what um i don't use influencers okay uh i do you eventually i do yes you need to yeah because uh uh one of the guys i follow and you know him of course and you probably do the marketing for him is pain oh yeah that's my client yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so pain pain is great you know he gets um yeah uh what's her name um the miss foodie Okay. Yeah. 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 She gets uh, Kimberly Curry. Yep. She's great. She awesome. Is. She's you know, sweetest girl ever. Yeah. She's she's pretty awesome. And uh, she stopped by yet? 
Uh, she has not. Okay. Uh, need to hit her up. I, yeah. She's real cool. I don't know how to. I mean, that, I guess that's a different <laughs> realm we have to talk about <laughs> after <too>. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, influencers I don't use. Yep. Pro- promotional posters I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, it's this past weekend I did the Hometown Connections Festival over at the Como Flea Market. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I posted a bunch of pictures at once. Yep. Posted the link to the event and I just... Uh, Shout out the advertisement to gotcha. to the surrounding area or to actually to St. Paul and the surrounding towns like mm-hmm. Roswell or Canada, Oakdale, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So mm-hmm. and actually it worked. Yeah, it worked pretty right. good. Uh, a lot of people that came, you know, because there's no way you can really track about how you hear from. You just gotta ask them and yep. uh, have them, you know, tell you what how they hear from. Well, and, there there is a way. Um, yeah, you would just have to like we ran a campaign for one of my uh, clients, but right. we made sure that they showed. Uh, like, a, like a coupon code or they showed that they saw their post on Facebook right and that way you could tell like it worked or not you know but, okay I mean you could you definitely ask too, right. but there's other ways you could do it okay too. so yeah there's right. other ways to do it right yeah for sure like so, so I guess we have to kind of have a conversation <laughs> later then yeah yeah <laughs> um, but yeah man I think um, you know Facebook is very cheap I'm pretty right. sure you didn't spend that much and you still got a lot of you know results from that right um, and I think you know using it's influencers are huge right you know uh, a lot of them may have like 2,000 to 10k or oh, yeah. more than that right and a lot of them will just want free sushi in return right and they'll post and yeah. you'll reach about you know you'll reach at least like you know 20 to 70 percent of their audience right. based on how good their engagement is exactly and so it's just huge man mm-hmm. if they're local too it's just you know you'll right. be able to get huge results from that right. and you have to figure out like there's a lot of ways you can do it, man. You can That's make true. it a branding post where you just, they just post about you, or you can make it a salesy post. Right. Um, it's really how you position it, man, and uh, I think that's huge for a lot of right. businesses like yours. Yeah. And like, yeah, you need to hit up Little Miss Fooey because right. that'll do wonders for your business. Yeah. He, as it did for my my boy Pang. Oh so. yeah, I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so let's get into like, um, kind of outside of business. Maybe it does fall into business, but uh-huh. uh, I like to ask everybody like kind of like what are you obsessed with right now like for me um i'm kind of obsessed with like mm, right now like instagram just brought out mm. igtv right. so i'm like trying to figure out like hmm, how can businesses use this how can people use this to like build their brand or build right. their business and stuff right. like that or music wise i'm interested in you know drake shopping's album this friday so uh-huh. i'm like I'm excited for right, that, you right, know. So, like, right. what are some things that you're obsessed with right now? Just generally speaking. Yeah, just yeah. in general, man. Just Aside from business, business yep. too. Okay. Yep. Anything. In terms Food, of business, whatever. what am I? What I'm excited for uh, is next year, actually. So, uh, so I the business started last year. Last year we're just getting getting started. This year is uh, building a strong customer base and foundation. Mm-hmm. Next year. I'm positioning myself to actually open a small restaurant. Really? So that's okay. I'm, I'm you heard it here first. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of people know about that. Yeah. If not, you're probably the first and whoever you, uh, is watching at the yep. moment. So uh, I'm obsessed about that right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's um, it's some plans I'm putting in motion. Um, well, actually, not is 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 what is going on paper right now. Next year will be going in motion for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that. Man, I'm looking forward to the vacations yeah. and this winter I have uh, actually I have Hawaii lined up this this really? January, so that's gonna be very exciting. That'll be fun, man. Yeah, just to try some authentic poke and yep. um, that's kind some of some research, right? Yeah, research. <laughs> <laughs> Tax write off research, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of my next. So like, your restaurant that's coming up, you kind of have. Is it more like um, in the idea process, or is it more like how you start making steps already to like? Um, start building that off like have you uh, it's just the business spots? plan right now okay yep we're still in the business plan phase yep I uh, just writing down uh, testing the expanded menu yep so there will be ex- expanded menu as well nice uh, with uh, you know Asian fusion okay uh, from anywhere from Japanese to Hmong to uh, Chinese yep. uh, Hawaiian so it's gotcha. gonna be a mixer of stuff that'll be awesome yeah and maybe just stuff I I, I throw together too because mm-hmm. a lot of honestly a lot of the stuff on my menu is just being creative and yeah. just throwing stuff together and things just working out yep yeah for sure yeah um, so what about like um what about locations have you thought about that yet so locations ideally uh so let's take a bit step back yeah uh, the restaurant 
is only this is still only the first phase. Yep. My end goal actually is I want a fleet of food trucks. Mm, yeah. So it's, okay. um, so I I still it's still in the works. Yeah. I don't want to say too much yet. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah, I don't want to get sure, excited sure. and mislead all yeah, you guys. For so sure. okay. Uh, the, the goal is to have a fleet of food trucks with a with a uh, restaurant I can utilize as commissary for all the food trucks. Gotcha. So that's the end goal. And then obviously have uh, a bar as well, a full full service bar. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Man. So that's the plan. Great. Um, and what was the question again? I was just thinking about like location. So okay, and location. So yeah. Right, and then location. Um, it depends. Yeah. Because, uh, like, it's still in the works. Yep. So I'm debating between two options right now. Yep. Either because if, if I do was to do a restaurant here centralized in Saint Paul. Yep. Uh, my weakness would be lunchtime. For sure. Because there's not a lot of business parks or businesses, uh, corporate businesses Correct. here and Correct. on the east side Correct. specifically. Correct. So I would have to branch out to like the Roseville, mm -hmm. um, Oakdale, uh, and maybe even further out to, yep. to hit for lunchtime. Yep. But if I was to do it on the east side, I would have to close down for lunch, run the food trucks, mm -hmm. run the fleet of food trucks for lunch, and then open for dinner. Gotcha. Yeah, and okay. for for my main following, okay. for dinner. So those are my two options right now. Gotcha. Is right. your business more like? I mean, obviously you can't do it by yourself. You have yeah. Like, is it more like family run or? I have employees actually. Okay. Yeah, I have I have uh, people that work for me. Really? Okay. Uh, family. Uh, it can get complicated. For sure. As sure. everyone, yeah. as every entrepreneur may know. Yeah. You know, family can't get uh, complicated sometimes. So. Gotcha. Yeah, right. for sure. Um. Okay. So. That's pretty much it. Last question would just be like, what is your question of the day for the fans? I like to make sure that, you know, everybody that comes here, they have like a question that's been on their mind for uh -huh. like ever that they want to ask their friends or family or like just my audience, your audience, uh -huh. just do some market research maybe. Right. Maybe get some comments back so you can kind of build off of. All right. So a question for my audience, right? Or for your, for the audience. For, right? Yeah, for everybody. For everybody? The, yeah. Okay. So if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, my 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 question my main question i always ask is ask is why haven't you done it already right so why haven't you done it already because um and, and it could be many things it could be mm -hmm. the money it could be uh, and, and see money is always the, the issue as it was for myself yeah see money is always the issue and then people talk about oh i don't know how like yep. how do i set up uh a llc how do mm -hmm. how do i set up a sole proprietor let alone which one do i choose yeah right yeah yep. And, and how do I do it at the Minnesota Secretary of State? So, yeah. and aside from all that, you know, and, and if those are your answers, how are you going to get the resources you need is, is the most important thing. And if, and on the other side, if you were like me where I knew how to do, I had the knowledge to start a business, however, I didn't have the capital. Is this multiple questions, my bad. No, it's cool. How are you going to downsize, like how I downsize the restaurant to a food truck? Yeah. How are you going to start from phase one and build from there? Mm -hmm. is, is my question. So what's your phase one and how are you going to build from phase one to a full-size restaurant? Or how are you going to start from your clothing line and build it to your your own brand brick and mortar? So mm -hmm. that's my question. Gotcha. Right. Cool. All right. Thanks for coming on, yeah. man. I appreciate it. Thanks I for having me. your story, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yep. Yes, sir.